Talk Radio's Film Courage. And we're in the beautiful studio of LA Talk Radio here. And uh, as we walked in this morning, we found these great little treats here. And uh, we've affectionately named this the Gregory Bain White Chocolate Mustache. So you can get that on GregoryBain.com. And then we have our wonderful uh, Goodbye Promise backer, Paul Borgonia. And this is a Paul Borgonia Butterscotch Treat. So check it out. Um, we have the two gentlemen here in studio, and actually Paul Borgonia is going to take the reins and interview filmmaker Gregory Bain. So I'm going to hand it off to you. <laughs> I'm Paul Borgonia. I'm not Gregory Bain. <laughs> this right here is Gregory Bain. Um, I've never done this, so uh, forgive me, but I, I got to sit in the studio with you today, and um, it was pretty educational for me. You know, um, I learned a lot, and. And uh, I just so have to be like a teacher now and be like, what did you learn? Yeah, I want you to be my sensei. <laughs> <laughs> but um, really, um, I, I, I've listened to you um, talk about your, your films, um, Jens Pulver, Driven, and uh, Purse of Interest. And I also had a chance to talk to you downstairs. Mm -hmm. You know, you have your uh, father of a six year old daughter, and me, myself, I have a six, uh, 16 year old daughter, so I know how yeah. busy you are. Um, how do you find the time to to um, to do what you do as a filmmaker and and raise a daughter, uh, engage with your your audience that you're building, and be creative at the same time? Uh, well, it's definitely obviously a challenge having all these sort of things sort of circulating. Um, uh, you know, I, part of it. I, well, with my daughter, I, I you know have her every other week, so I do get a week that I have just that I can you know work. Um, there's a lot of I don't probably don't sleep very well. It's part of it, um, but you know it sort of has become this extension of it's just what I do. I mean I've worked sort of as a cinematographer and editor for the last ten years or so, and um, now just doing my own thing. It's sort of a natural extension to just. Uh, you know, I wake up every day and I, you know, I'll be online for a little bit. I'll, you know, do what I have to do. If I have my daughter, I, you know, get her off to school. Then I have a couple hours that I can just sit and work. Um, it's, uh, but it is, it's a strain, especially when you're not only making the films, but then working on distributing the films, because there's huge amounts of things that have to be done. And um, I, I have, you know, one collaborator, um, Jay Ruben Appleman, who is sort of my main guy, who's wrote and starred in Person of Interest and is writing Jen's Pulver Driven, um, and also sort of helping pick up the slack of other things that we need to do. But it is a, a you know, it's just one of those things where you just kind of got to do what you have to do, and I have to constantly sort of return emails, engage, as well as take care of my own client work, as well as, you know, raise a child. and. You know, I, I guess I look at it in terms of I'm grateful that I have the life that I have. I mean, a lot of people have to go to a 9 to 5 -er, um, and do all, and try, you know, and have the child and have, trying to figure out creative time, you know, and like my entire day usually is some level of creative time. Either somebody's paying me for it or I'm, you know, investing time in my own stuff. Wow, that's, that's amazing. I mean, uh, me being a, a writer for the past uh, five to six years or so, I, mm -hmm. I um, and raising my daughter at the same time, I, and work and trying to bring home a paycheck and feed her. Yeah. It, it's it's just that that sounds like a whole lot what you do, and, and <laughs> I don't know I don't know how you do it, and um, I'm learning as I go. So um, that's inspiring. It's very inspiring. Well, thank you. I I think that. Um you know, I guess I look at it like uh, but there's a lot of people that have it worse off than I do, and it it is a lot to do. But I feel just grateful that I have the opportunity to actually do stuff, and and that uh, apparently I don't suck, which is helpful. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, so it helps to sort of keep the the you know, because it is hard, you know, to sort of be creative and to constantly right. be sort of you know whether you're doing something that's for a client that maybe sort of interested or not or you're doing your own work it's uh it takes a lot to sort of come to the table creatively it's it's 
I think a lot of people don't realize that, you know, it's one thing, you know, to sort of go and have a job and have a task, and you know what that task is. But, I mean, I'm literally, you know, from ground zero, every project, ground zero, every month, you know, sort of financially, which is always difficult, you know, it's like, you're like, well, yeah, I hope, hope somebody calls me to do some work yeah, right. you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, I was trying to think of a question in there uh, uh, for you, and um, I was kind of thinking um, of when I, when the, the day, I can remember the day I just woke up and, and, and uh, wanted to start writing. And I've always been creative throughout my whole life, but I remember waking up one day and just said, "You know what? This is. Uh, this, I think this. I'm going to try this. And I have a story in my mind. I'm going to sit down and write it." Um, what, like, do can you remember the first time that you, you know, you, you had like an epiphany or something? Uh, that you just you sat down and said, I, "This is what I have to do." And if you know, if you can remember that, what gave you like the courage to go through with that? For me, it's a little different. I, like, it was actually sort of an honest extension of my entire life. I grew up in really small rural towns. I mean, one town I lived in is called Potter, Nebraska, and there's literally 370 people in this town. And so my entire childhood was filled with comic books. And I, I for as long as I can remember, I was drawing. And probably, like, my moment is being... I think maybe seven or eight years old and getting an award for a picture that I drew, right. you know, and it just, like everyone, it, you know, sort of in my family always referred to me as the artist in the family and that sort of thing. Um, so I, it was just a complete, that was my thing. I always drew, I always was the guy in class that was the artist. Um, so it was sort of, and then when it sort of switched over to film and trying to figure that out it was all sort of a natural extension it was never it's always been in my mind that oh i will do something creative like i never had you know i've worked regular jobs and i've done all that but it was never distant from myself that oh i am a creative person this is what i do you know right um so it was it's it's sort of been the entire my entire life which again is something i sort of feel grateful about and it would i don't you know, I didn't have anybody in my family that was sort of overly creative. My grandfather um, was, and he was a great storyteller, and I think that probably influenced me a lot. But, I mean, a lot of it was being in uh, small towns with no entertainment right. but comic books. Yeah.